But now on the track, it is the 1500 meters that will feature Caitlin Tui. 12 athletes in this final. They qualified for that right on Thursday. There is the North Carolina State Junior. With 92 degrees and 55% humidity at race time. Sun just about to go down behind Royal Stadium. And getting out there up front, that's Shannon Flockhart, also Olivia Howell of Illinois, who was the indoor mile champion. And you knew that someone was going to have to take a risk. This field is absolutely loaded. Caitlin Dewey likes to get out front, likes to push the pace. We're seeing her do that from the gun. In talking with her coach, Lori Hennes, this is what they were focused on all year long. Although she is going to double in the 15 and the 5, she wanted to challenge herself in the 1500 because it's one of the few things she has yet to do at the NCAA championship level. And she is making an honest pace early. She is followed by Olivia Howell right there. And Izzy Thornton bought of Oregon. Oregon with three athletes in this final, but two of them are off the back of the pack. Let's take a look at the first 400 meters. It looks like a good brisk one, 64 seconds. Very honest by Caitlin Tui, but she's doing all the work out there. You mentioned Oregon. They have three in this field, and their coach, Shalane Flanagan, said this is the deepest 1,500-meter field I have ever seen in an NCAA meet, and this is an incredible showing for the Ducks to have three among the 12 competing. Caitlin Tui is throwing down the hammer, challenging the field to go with her, and looks really relaxed up there. Also love the way that Olivia Howell is running right now, carrying that momentum from her fantastic indoor season. Well, only two other athletes really trying to go with her, and there's even a gap between Tui and Howell. We've got nine athletes who just don't want to try and hang with this pace. Blair, after the semifinal, it appeared in her post uh, race interview that Caitlin Tui was pretty upset about the way her semifinal race went. Are you at all surprised that she appears to be running pissed off from the front right now? No, she is a ferocious competitor. She hates to lose. She doesn't care if it's a qualifying round. She doesn't care if it's a final. This woman runs races to win. And you can tell that she is punishing this field. She is throwing down the gauntlet, testing them to go with her. And now, as you see, moving into third, white tops with those bright orange bottoms. That is Bila Jepkarui of Oklahoma State. She threw in a 67.9, which should have bunched things up a bit, but that 64 was just so shocking to most of the athletes in this field that you can see the separation. One thing to keep in mind, Caitlin Tui hasn't run a ton of 1500s this outdoor season, but this indoor season, that record-breaking indoor season that she had, she split among that season on her resume a 427, anchoring a DMR, and was surprised at how easy that felt. Look how poised and relaxed she continues to look even as her turnover quickens. And Izzy Thornton bot covers the move. She has put herself in striking distance. Yeah, she definitely has reeled her back in. And that's because that 67.9, and we'll see what that third lap ends up being. She may have slowed it down enough that that is what left or put Izzy Thornton bot into the idea of getting there. 68 seconds, that last 400. It is going to be a huge closing kick. Thornton Bott is from Australia, and now look now. Six, Six. where there were only was only one. And from Harvard, that is... That is Maya that Ramsden. Is Maya Ramsden. This is now a race, and Tui and, did all that work, and she is paying for it. And Maya Ramsden is expected to come back in the 5,000 as well. She's going to double also. The duo from Oregon, watch out for this close. Ramsden. Margo Wappens Appleton in there from Virginia. Ramsden has got the win, and now it's going to be close for second. But they have dropped Tui all the way back to sixth. She paid the price for taking it out. 4.08.22, an outstanding time and a lifetime best for Maya Ramsden, the sophomore from New Zealand. So she was pissed off on Thursday. She's gonna really be angry now. 
So she will use that to fuel herself going into the final. Here is that big move. Maya Ramston just secured herself onto the shoulder and plotted her execution in the final 150 meters. Swings right to the outside. Look at how she looks controlling her upper body, using those arms to drive it home, improves from a fifth place finish in the mile final at the NCAA Indoor Championships. And now she is your NCAA 1500 meter champion in impressive fashion. I don't know that you find a better tactically executed race than what Harvard's Maya Ramsden just did. First title for the school at this distance. She wins it with 408.60, the ninth fastest in meet history. Izzy Thornton Bott ends up second. Oregon scoring some serious points. And then, unfortunately, Caitlin Tui all the way down to six, but she made that race happen. And John is with the winner. I am, who's just you know, a little light lift refreshment after winning the, the 1500 meter. You were in this race last year and you took 10th. Yeah. Bring me full circle through the year how it is you're now the NCAA champion. Oh, I mean, I think last year was, I was like a completely different athlete. Um, I really wasn't enjoying my time here. I was so nervous. And like, I didn't expect to make it this far last year. So I didn't have even like the goals or the dreams to allow it to be possible. And I think as a result, my, uh, like the outcome didn't necessarily reflect how fit I was or like what I wanted out of the sport. So this year I really worked on like trying to have fun with it a little more and like understanding that like the work that I put in throughout the year is the hard part. And once I get here, like I love racing. It's fun. It's exhilarating. And kind of like finding that joy again was really helpful for me. And in this race, uh, I want to know how you stayed patient because the gal out front isn't just any other gal. Caitlin tui has got some great bona fides. How is it you decided to, to wait and, and, and stalk late? Yeah, honestly, like, I don't think that what just happened is necessarily part of the plan. <laughs> Not in a bad way, just in, like, a realistic way. I wanted a PB. I wanted a finish that was higher than last year's and hopefully higher than indoors. That was kind of my goal going into it. Um, but, you know, like, talked about the race plan. I'm working on being more efficient with my race moves, not bouncing around so much, and, and then being there when it matters because I, I really do love, like, the last 50. And so <laughs> once I was, like, coming on the bend, I was like, wait, I, I actually feel like I have the legs. Maybe I could do this. Um, and then, like, watching my teammate come second last night, I think he's such a gutsy runner, Graham Blanks. And I think for me, like, watching that, seeing someone I train with every day do it, I was like, oh, like, I can do this, too. I've just got to commit. So good for you. Congratulations. And Dwight, uh, finally, Harvard's no longer just a hammer thrower school. 